Hi to everyone. Welcome to the fourth episode of Open Lecture Series in iCRIPEX Financial Technology Master's Program. So since last two weeks, we have observed lots of new debates, lots of new uh, happenings and news about the cryptocurrency ecosystem. And I would like to start by, first of all, reminding you the previous episodes, and then we will continue with today's outline. So let me first share the screen with you. And immediately uh, you will re remember that in the very first episode, we had focused on uh, wallets. In the second episode, we have focused on the categorization of crypto assets. In the previous episode, we have briefly discussed the cryptocurrency regulations around the world. And now actually we see that uh, how important that topic is because uh, since uh, last week, actually there are uh, very important news from China, which seemingly affected uh, the whole uh, ecosystem. So uh, as usual, uh, our uh, outline for today's episode will be composed of uh, three main sections. The first one uh, will include a challenging question of the episode. And that challenging question for everyone to discuss is, can Bitcoin be banned? And this is important because we discussed a lot about the decentralized features of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. And still uh, throughout these three past episodes, we have seen lots of events where, for example, a tweet from Elon Musk affected the markets or El Salvador's president's news affected again the uh, cryptocurrency uh, prices. So uh, in these senses, uh, this week, we have another important news from China, and uh, that is actually the news that you see. So the People's Bank of China intensifies Bitcoin ban with financial institution meeting. And not only this, so not only a discouragement from uh, the Chinese authorities to the financial institutions, uh, for the usage of cryptocurrencies, uh, there was also a kind of supply shock because many miners in China, uh, located in China, uh, they were uh, actually not only discouraged but threatened to be uh, removed through the electricity, cut their electricity so that they will not be able to uh, continue their mining activities. Uh, so. This is challenging uh, in the general sense. So what about Bitcoin's utopia? What about Satoshi's main uh, vision? So are these uh, still valid or they are uh, just unfilled uh, promises? And most importantly, for especially the, the future of the ecosystem, not only, of course, about Bitcoin, uh, what we should expect about the regulatory issues and uh, what kind of influence uh, they will uh, have on these uh, ecosystems. And most importantly, of course, uh, is it contradictory if this ecosystem is decentralized, supposed to be decentralized? Uh, why ecosystem is so much affected by, for example, last week's Fed's decision, which signals that the interest rates might be increased not by the end of 2023, but in an earlier uh, period. So even such a signal uh, affected again the uh, markets and lots of discussions going on if we are in the bear markets right now, if the bull run is over, uh, etc. And of course, extra news, which we call as FAT, uh, which means fear, uncertainty and doubt type of news, of course, affects uh, not only the investor's behavior, but also uh, it affects the uh, propaganda type of news about Bitcoin and all of the uh, cryptocurrencies. So to be consistent with these news, uh, we thought it would be nice to have an overview about Bitcoin's history and some projections about its future.
And uh, since, of course, now we are in summer uh, and uh, all around the world, uh, the normalization is uh, everywhere, uh, meaning that uh, probably many of you uh, are uh, watching this uh, offline, but not uh, in a synchronous manner. So in this sense, we plan to have more relaxed lectures throughout the semester and beginning from September, more technical details will be provided. So in that manner, today's lecture will be focusing on more uh, the storyline type of uh, information about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Uh, so this is the main uh, white paper of the Bitcoin that everyone should have a look at if uh, you are interested in these topics. And I think the title describes it perfectly. So Bitcoin is designed to be a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. Nothing more, nothing less. So nothing more is important because many people sometimes put lots of emphasis on its uh, price and uh, this is actually misleading. So Bitcoin is not an instrument to make people uh, wealthier. It might be the case uh, for the speculative market structure, but uh, no one should forget about its description because the judgment of Bitcoin's success should be through that criteria. Uh, could it fulfill this function? Are people using Bitcoin as a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, cash uh, system? So, uh, well, definitely, yes. I mean, many people are uh, using Bitcoin for uh, transferring a value. Uh, on the other hand, uh, due to the hype due to the speculators uh, of course the price of bitcoin is uh, fluctuating a lot but this is due to demand side mainly due to the uh, uh, investors uh, who are uh, believing that the bitcoin's price will be uh, huge in uh, the forthcoming years uh, or uh, some people are just uh, ch checking these cryptocurrencies uh, with the hope of being uh, rich as soon as possible to get rid of all of these type of speculative movements, I think it is extremely critical to understand, especially the supply mechanism of Bitcoin. And when we talk about supply mechanism, it will be also important to know a bit about game theory, game theory basics or about more importantly, mechanism design theory. Throughout these open lecture series, we visit actually these very important literatures, which not only transformed uh, economics literature, but also influenced political economy, political science, sociology, and technology as well. Well, game theory in the very short description analyzes the situations where there are strategic interaction. And for any decentralized mechanism, when there are some supply and demand sites, of course, the motivations, the incentives of the demanders and the suppliers should be very well designed, very well studied. And uh, apart from all of those popular discussions about the price, I think the main merit, the main potential of bitcoin relies on its design where the suppliers incentives demanders incentives are uh, kind of perfectly uh, or almost perfectly uh, described and uh, its protocol designed accordingly so that is the real uh, value which bitcoin uh, provides to the humanity and uh, this is of course not out of the contexts of the history and about the financial system uh, in terms of uh, a very short uh, time period uh, since 2008 uh, we have seen lots of discussions about the effectiveness and the 
monetary policy choices of central banks. It started with Fed and it started with 2008, where there was, a, first of all, mortgage crisis uh, triggering uh, global financial uh, turbulence. Uh, but uh, to have an exact connection and to clarify that if everyone is just speculating that Bitcoin is kind of a protest instrument to the traditional financial system, this is an interpretation, or are there any underlying reasons why uh, we should uh, think so? Uh, the fact is, in the very first block of Bitcoin blockchain, which is called as Genesis block, the headline of this newspaper, which is the Times, with the headline of Chancellor on brink of second bailout for banks, which of course implicitly states that the first bailout was not successful, implicitly says that there are always needs for those bailout packages to rescue some banks or some other financial institutions, which implicitly states that our financial system is not functioning very well. So that is actually coded in the very first block of Bitcoin blockchain. And this is among the most justifying reason why people uh, think Bitcoin not only as a kind of innovative product, but also it's a protest product because it not only criticizes the existing financial system, but it actually contributes to uh, the functioning of a new financial system, an alternative financial system. So that's why the title of Bitcoin and to understand it, not read more, not read less is so critical. So Bitcoin is designed to be a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system where uh, in the traditional one with the uh, control of the central authorities, uh, things are uh, by definition not and cannot uh, go very efficiently in this globally engaged world. And uh, another important remark through the timeline is actually by uh, 2020 in uh, May uh, 11. So in uh, May 11, 2020, uh, the halving happened. So halving operations are again about the supply mechanism of Bitcoin. So Bitcoin's design is not only for uh, transferring uh, some value, but it is uh, designed to be a currency. And in that sense, uh, one of the main problem of all world currencies is, of course, inflation. So those headlines and bailout packages are not only signaling that financial system is uh, not working perfect, but also it suffers from a uh, quite consistent problem all over the world, which is related to inflation. So in very simple terms, uh, as long as there are injections and trillions uh, of dollars of injections through the monetary expansionary policies, of course, the reason differs. I mean, in 2008, it was throughout a completely different reason. In 2020, we have the pandemics and there's another uh, underlying reason. But no matter what, uh, it is how the system works. Dollar is vulnerable to inflation problems. That's why just last week, uh, Fed again uh, emphasized this, this time uh, declaring that, uh, well, uh, there is there should be an end to the monetary expansionary policies in time thanks to the normalization period due to very successful vaccination policies all over the world uh, well of course this will end the monetary expansionary policy will end has to end but still uh, these are all the time creating collectionary uh, movements, not only in the cryptocurrency markets, but actually in all markets. When there is a valuation of the dollar, uh, it immediately affects the currencies of developing countries and everything is uh, actually 
it can be checked through the uh, data just even checking the news will uh, justify uh, what we are talking about and another important result of uh, the injections and very uh, expansionary monetary policies is of course uh, negative uh, interest rates and uh, this year and beginning from actually last year in all developed countries that was an issue that was another reason why uh, there was a huge movement uh, inflow to the cryptocurrency markets and this should be understood well because when fed declares that uh, the monetary expansionary policy uh, will be ended soon or in simplest terms uh, you should expect an increase in the interest rate of dollar by the end of 2022 or by the beginning of 2023 uh, it immediately influences the risk preferences of the investors so uh, which means uh, cryptocurrency assets uh, might lose their uh, charm uh, for uh, especially the investors who are in this business for uh, having a, a quick profit so in this sense to be critical for uh, the prices or the cryptocurrencies, everyone should take into account of, again, the white paper. So it wasn't designed to be that much uh, fluctuating in terms of prices. So it is a technological product to make a financial system more decentralized, which will bring more stability and more freedom for uh, many people around the world especially for the ones who cannot access the uh, traditional banking services and this actually makes up uh, more than uh, 1.7 billion people who lack a financial account in any bank around the world once we uh, investigate uh, what's going on in the cryptocurrency markets uh, i think the a feature uh, of Bitcoin uh, might be understood in a better way. One, whenever uh, everyone changes their focus just from the out of the price fluctuations to the innovation itself, then uh, anyone will first of all uh, recognize uh, Bitcoin is just the beginning. We have a DeFi movement, decentralized finance protocols, mainly based on Ethereum, which is also called like blockchain 2.0. But we have also NFT markets, uh, which are actually making the uh, hot topics uh, and trends in the recent uh, uh, news. So uh, for understanding China effect in the markets, I think it's also important to uh, know about this graph. So hash power is related to indeed the supply side of Bitcoin blockchain. We will talk about details episode by episode in a slow manner. As I mentioned at the beginning, since now we are in summer, I think it will be uh, more uh, important having these videos as uh, references for the future lectures. And uh, we will continue uh, like that, but with some uh, small uh, piece of information, uh, which we will actually add up into each other by episode, so that the supply side of Bitcoin will be completed throughout uh, a couple of lectures instead of one so all of bitcoin's supply mechanism is run through miners so the miners are indeed constructors of blockchain and for this job of course in uh, similar to all businesses there should be an incentive and the incentive for those constructors of blockchain, miners, as we say, uh, the block reward is the very first motivation, but it is actually a temporary. It will end at some point. Uh, another uh, main uh, revenue is uh, through the commissions who are demanding that their transactions 
uh, should be in the next block and uh, those actually offer some commissions so that their transactions uh, become valid and by these two type of revenues uh, the miners are incentivized uh, for constructing the uh, blockchain meaning that in more technical terms uh, for uh, allocating their uh, hash power as we say which is similar to their computers calculating uh, power uh, for uh, solving a cryptocurrency sorry crypto uh, uh, cryptographic problem finding a hash output which the details will be covered later so in this uh, competition uh, there is of course a cost side of this as well so the incentivization of the miners is not through the reward but also through the cost mechanism and cost is indeed the electricity consumed by those mining devices so now they are mainly called also as ASICs devices which are very special um, uh, processing units to solve that uh, hash uh, output uh, problem and the hashing power is standing for the allocated computing power which consumes energy and this is also uh, a measure for understanding uh, how for example up to which degree Bitcoin is uh, decentralized in terms of its uh, supply uh, side. And uh, the effect of Chinese uh, authoritarian uh, policies are so important because as this statistics illustrate, the 65 percentage uh, of the hash power is uh, coming through uh, the China region. Uh, I say region because, uh, of course, uh, this is uh, not through only one uh, city or through one uh, pool, uh, as some people uh, claim. So this is uh, a rough measure. So we cannot actually very precisely measure the dominance of uh, uh, China, but this gives an idea. On the other hand, uh, with the recent news, uh, we know that now the Chinese miners or miners who are located in China, uh, they are actually moving their uh, farms, as we say, to other regions uh, around the world. Well, it is actually uh, not a very negative news because uh, in to be consistent with the decentralization uh, utopia of Bitcoin, uh, well, this statistics is not consistent. This is uh, a illustration which shows that China is indeed uh, the main dominant player in the supply side of Bitcoin. So any shift of these statistics throughout the other countries, which is actually happening throughout these days, is a good news in the uh, medium run. Uh, but of course, in the short run, we see very uh, fluctuating uh, price movements uh, throughout these days. Uh, and this is, by the way, uh, throughout uh, a source uh, from University of Cambridge Center for Alternative Finance. Uh, at this moment, to give you a rough idea about the feature of uh, Bitcoin, where you can check through some uh, data sets, uh, I would like to share these three uh, websites. The first one is uh, actually about the nodes. So these nodes are, uh, to be uh, precise, not miners. So these nodes are uh, like the copies of blockchain uh, in their uh, computers. Uh, so this shows that now uh, roughly there are more than 6,000 nodes active at this moment. Uh, of course, there are some of them which are not active now. Approximately, it will be not wrong to say that uh, roughly we have 10,000 nodes of uh, Bitcoin blockchain, kind of 10,000 copies. So it doesn't matter uh, one of those nodes are uh, not functioning uh, from today to tomorrow. It doesn't matter if one region is completely dark in this picture. As long as there are some nodes, even a few nodes, the Bitcoin blockchain will uh, continue functioning. Uh, 
Uh, but of course, uh, there no one should forget that there is a huge uh, correlation between the supply side and the uh, demand side for uh, Bitcoin blockchain. If we see uh, that there are less and less miners, this will uh, mean that uh, actually uh, it is not profitable. Uh, it means that uh, their cost is more than their revenue. Well, one good news, uh, which is again designed by the Bitcoin protocol, is uh, the supply and the reward mechanism which incentivize those miners are not static procedures. They, they are dynamic, meaning that uh, once there is a drop in the hash rate, like in these days we see that metric, uh, actually the system adjusts its difficulty level, as we say, accordingly, which means uh, it uh, becomes uh, more probable for any miner to find the next block, which means it costs less uh, to solve that simpler uh, problem, which is simplified by the protocols designed by checking uh, some main parameters, like how many miners are computing to find the successful ha hash output. So these are usually not uh, very known or discussed topics, but these are essential to understand the mechanism of uh, Bitcoin. So the supply side determines itself in a dynamic way, which affects and which means actually a dynamic revenue mechanism and also dynamic cost mechanism, which makes the system a sustainable one. Well, if it is also accompanied with the necessary demand, then actually there is no reason that uh, Bitcoin uh, will uh, collapse. But of course, the prices might fluctuate a lot due to the small size of the markets. But we have discussed that uh, even in the uh, very beginning of this lecture. So the beauty and the innovative side of Bitcoin is uh, not perfectly uh, correlated with its uh, price. Uh, I mean, the prices might be speculative. The real thing is if the infrastructure, if the network is uh, working or uh, not working, and actually it has uh, never stopped since the uh, beginning. So another uh, useful uh, tool uh, for a uh, more advanced uh, audience is actually to check the uh, information through explorer type of website. So this is one of them, Blockchain Explorer, uh, where you can check the latest blocks and you will see that, for example, just 11 minutes ago, uh, a new block by this height is uh, found through uh, these uh, pool and pool. And uh, there's also some uh, illustrations which shows the distribution of uh, uh, the pools. Uh, and as uh, we have already discussed, uh, the China is indeed the dominant player in the uh, mining pools for now. And it looks like it is uh, changing. And here, just by clicking the latest uh, block's height, uh, there are some parameters which I will visit later. And for the references now, for example, this is the hash uh, of this uh, block. And please recognize that there are many zeros at the beginning, which is actually related to the uh, difficulty level of finding a new block. Uh, for understanding this fully, uh, we need to cover some basic uh, statistics and probability calculations. Uh, on the other end, uh, you can also check the block reward, which is fixed, which is 6.25 right now. And uh, in the uh, 11th of May of 2020, actually, it is reduced to 6.25. Uh, last year, uh, it was 12.5. Uh, Four years earlier, it was 25. Four years earlier, meaning that at the beginning of uh, the Genesis block times, uh, the block reward was around uh, 50 uh, Bitcoins. And you see that there is another very non-negligible fee reward here, which is the total amount 
uh, of the commissions uh, offered by uh, the transaction senders. And there is also a very uh, nice summary of uh, the uh, also the USD valuation uh, updated uh, one of these rewards. So just through the commissions, which is paid by the users of Bitcoin blockchain, uh, the latest blocks miner uh, has been rewarded uh, more than 2000, uh, sorry, uh, more than $22,000. Uh, and the block reward is more than 200,000. So that is the main incentive in terms of its revenue. And these number of zeros actually affect the uh, electricity bill paid by those mining farms. So knowing those uh, or remembering those very small pieces of information uh, will help anyone to understand uh, the further and more advanced topics in the supply side of the uh, Bitcoin blockchain. Uh, finally, I would like to show you an, an enjoyable uh, website. And uh, that is uh, actually uh, not only for uh, Bitcoin, but also uh, for uh, uh, Ethereum, uh, which we will uh, concentrate in the forthcoming episodes and here uh, actually this is a very nice uh, graphical illustration of uh, the operations the blocks uh, latest blocks mined uh, in the uh, bitcoin blockchain and in the left uh, to the left it is ethereum's blockchain and the very first thing that anyone can uh, notice is in bitcoin's blockchain you see that there's uh, a kind of queue for transactions uh, on the other end, uh, on Ethereum side, it is uh, less crowded. So we will actually uh, comment on those. Uh, it is not as simple as saying that, oh, Ethereum is newer than Bitcoin, so it is quicker. No, it is by design. So Bitcoin's blocks are by designed uh, to be mined approximately on average in every 10 minutes. Uh, so, uh, and this is for a reason uh, which brings us to, to the discussion of the beginning of the lecture for making Bitcoin uh, not vulnerable uh, from inflation. So this is uh, predetermined by Bitcoin's algorithm so that no one can voluntarily uh, actually change Bitcoin's supply mechanism, meaning that you cannot expect from Bitcoin's monetary policy to uh, have an expansionary side in one period. No, it is stable, it is very well known, it is uh, transparent, and in every moment it is very clear how many Bitcoins are in circulation. In four years time, everyone can be clear uh, what how many bitcoins will be in the uh, markets and actually uh, probably uh, as you know uh, or, or now as everyone knows uh, there is actually total uh, supply limit for bitcoin so there will be no more than 21 million bitcoins which is another uh, parameter uh, to protect bitcoin against inflation so, uh, as I mentioned, since now we are in summer, I would like to stop for the informational content here for, uh, again, uh, more advanced uh, audience. Uh, there are some metrics where uh, you can check uh, and you can also have a better understanding about the markets. So through the website that I have shown you, uh, through the blockchain.com, you can see the updated uh, hash rate. And uh, this is a combination of the uh, effects of the China news and also Fed news that now the Bitcoin total hash rate is at the yearly lowest level, which is an important uh, metric, which indicates that in the supply side, uh, there is a kind of a shock uh, right now. And uh, also uh, for covering the latest uh, news, uh, it is important to notice that, for example, although 
China China side is banning those mining farms. Uh, in actually Nasdaq uh, recently, a Canadian miner a company Bit Farms uh, has been listed, and uh, now anyone can. Uh, trade uh, the stocks of those uh, minor companies and this is just the beginning actually there are some others already uh, uh, received approval uh, recently so that uh, it looks like indeed we will see a shift in this distribution so there will be less dominance of china in the miners uh, side uh, and uh, we will have a more uh, homogeneous distribution uh, so one final remark, uh, everyone should notice that there's a correlation of uh, two important uh, facts uh, which uh, affects China policy, China, Ch Chinese policies. So the first one is uh, this, uh, China is now the first country which has a working CBDC, Central Bank Digital Currency, Digital Yuan. And uh, we will see uh, more and more news about Digital Yuan, which of course will uh, have also political economic influences around the world. And it looks like uh, the Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are kind of interpreted as rival products to digital yuan by the uh, Chinese administrators, uh, although it should not be the case, which we have discussed partially and we will be discussing that uh, the real instruments that can be compared with CBDCs will be digital currencies designed and offered through uh, technology companies. Uh, a recent one is a DM project by uh, Facebook. So the real arena of competition will be among those digital currencies offered by companies and CBDCs, which will be uh, on the roadmap of every country very soon. Even now we have digital euro news, we have some other uh, countries which have their pilot projects for their central bank digital currencies. A second reason for uh, the uh, discouragement and even ban of those uh, mining farms in, uh, locating in China is the energy issue. We had discussed that Elon Musk's tweet a couple of weeks ago uh, was, uh, first of all, with a huge criticism, uh, but not that much fair criticism for uh, Bitcoin's energy consumption uh, throughout uh, its effect on environment. But we had discussed that uh, actually in the other countries, apart from China, renewable energy sources are also used for those mining facilities. A very recent news is by El Salvador, not only making Bitcoin a legal tender, they are now sharing news that uh, geothermal energy facilities are uh, being used for uh, providing energy to the mining farms for Bitcoin. So the renewable energy is always an option. And uh, also in USA, uh, we have now associations for mining farms based on renewable energy sources. So the recent news uh, about from the China side uh, is in that sense uh, twofold. Uh, the second reason is uh, already there are some environmental issues there and uh, apparently the uh, authorities are trying to eliminate that uh, issue by uh, coal-based uh, mining farms. So far, uh, we have covered the main topics uh, and uh, please have a look at those uh, resources because we will revisit them over and over again in the uh, next episodes. Uh, finally, uh, there are some daily metrics, including also some uh, headlines, daily headlines, technical analysis, uh, also uh, monitoring the 24 hour uh, highest volume change for the cryptocurrencies trending search i think this 
field is also growing uh, the sentimental analysis or social media supported uh, data visualization and analysis is, is uh, an important area which is growing every day uh, and uh, these uh, uh, illustrations are uh, thanks to Lunar Crash and uh, CoinGecko. And another important news, which indeed shows very clearly how fluctuating and how risky the cryptocurrency markets are, we have discussed and we have seen huge gains in the markets for almost all cryptocurrencies in the bull times, bull runs. Uh, well, uh, these heat maps show the seven day top 50 gainers and losers. And uh, we see that actually in the gainer side, the uh, map is empty, uh, which uh, I think uh, describes itself. So anyone in these markets, uh, especially focusing on price uh, and uh, trading uh, frequently, well, these times uh, are uh, the ones which uh, needs more care. So anyone should be uh, very well aware of uh, those. Uh, and uh, that's it. Uh, so let me check uh, actually the uh, comment side. Today actually we are already uh, kind of out of our time, uh, but if there are some uh, questions, let me briefly mention those. Um, well, Halit uh, asked uh, that, uh, do you think miners leaving China can have a beneficial side as well? Uh, well, fortunately, without seeing this question, we commented on this. I think it might trigger uh, and uh, it might trigger a more homogeneous distribution of the supply side for Bitcoin. Uh, so it is, I think, uh, also beneficial in the medium run, but through the transition period, we will see and observe more uh, fluctuations in the prices and in the markets. Uh, what's your opinion about Chinese miners moving to uh, Kazakhstan? Uh, well, it is a rational uh, action, of course, when there is a ban in uh, one country and in Kazakhstan electricity is uh, not that expensive, uh, so it is quite a rational uh, move. Uh, what about the ones moving to Florida? Uh, well, it is also important uh, because uh, please remember the uh, just two uh, previous episodes. Well, US side was criticizing, oh, Bitcoin is filthy, not environmental friendly. But in the recent three weeks, just after those tweets, we see that actually there is more than 11 percentage increase in the uh, hash rate power uh, in the US side. So indeed, it is switching from China to USA, which was quite uh, critical in the social media in terms of the uh, national uh, news. So uh, statistics show that most energy mining consumptions uh, come from uh, hydro. Uh, that is true, Ibrahim, uh, many thanks. Uh, I had also in the previous episodes uh, shared a, a report about that by Coindesk. So please check the previous episodes for the detailed analysis about the distribution of the energy sources used in uh, mining facilities around the world. Uh, well, China was indeed the main country based on coal consumption, but in the other countries it is actually not the case, which is uh, another uh, good news for the future of uh, Bitcoin. Many thanks for uh, listening uh, and uh, looking forward to meeting you in uh, two weeks and have a nice uh, summer. Bye.